Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Good morning, good afternoon, good evening <laughs> Hi everyone Thank you for this opportunity I would like to present a paper called The Use of Public Cloud Services Among Students for Online Learning With us, Rosila Hasan, Dina Fitria Murad, Wahiza Wahi, Rian Lenros, Nurul Halimatul Asmat Ismail, and Summer A.B. Awad It will be brought by me, Rian And the agenda today is we have introduction, then about cloud itself, yeah, more to public cloud. Then we have the paper focus uh, after that method. Uh, next result, and finally we have conclusion. We go to the introduction first. It is about the paper itself, yeah. So um, the fourth industrial revolution or IR 4.0 has brought cloud computing to the fore as a leading standard of service and resources delivery. In the IT industry, cloud computing has evolved as an emerging technology with diverse advantages of sub-technologies and concepts including distributed networking, processing power, uh, virtualization sharing, connectivity, and storage. So, by using cloud computing, Uh, users worldwide can explore various online services from many software without having to purchase them over the internet. The National Institute of Standard and Technology, or we call it NIST, denotes that cloud computing is a paradigm for enabling useful on-demand network access to a group of configurable computing resources. Yeah. Cloud computer is also described as an off-premise uh, where users are provided with application, computing resources, and services that come with the operating system in an infrastructure. So, we have this one according to cloud service is categorized uh, into three basic service models, yeah? namely software, As a service or SaaS, SaaS, yeah, <laughs> platform as a service, PaaS or PaaS, and infrastructure as a service, IaaS or IaaS, yeah. And then also, uh, cloud computing consists of uh, four primary deployment models, yeah. Uh, they are public cloud, private cloud hybrid cloud, and community cloud. All right. Then, from an economic point of view, public cloud users can gain value out of its infrastructure cost, yeah, which allow all individual clients to operate uh, at a low cost. In terms of uh, resources sharing, the public cloud is in high demand because it is able to deliver with the highest efficiency level. The public cloud also enables users to access the cloud via interfaces using a web browser. Furthermore, it is, uh, its performance can also be monitored by making it scalable. Customers only need to pay according to the amount of time they use the service. Of course, this concept applies similarly to the electrical system that we normally utilize at home. In contrast to other cloud deployment models, the public cloud is deemed less secure as it is exposed to any malicious attacks from various uh, aspects. So nevertheless, one way to overcome this problem is that cloud service providers must perform security checks. Yeah. Then we are coming to the about cloud, the public cloud itself. Yeah, so a public cloud is uh, a computing infrastructure. Yeah, that is open to all users or subscribers around the world. It is usually owned, managed, and hosted by a third party or a cloud service provider on the subscribers' uh, premises. Yeah allowing visibility of the cloud computing infrastructure's location. Um, this 
uh, the public cloud is used as a service via internet. Okay. Um, the cloud is also uh, accessible by all external users upon registration and permission to use cloud service and utilize cloud uh, resources on a pay per use model offered internet. It is widely accessible by any internet users. Yeah, this cloud uh, infrastructure is owned. Um, and managed by a large cloud service provider or CSP. The CSP is responsible yeah, for whole creation, ongoing support, security issues, and IT resources. Then, this infrastructure is shared between organizations. Yeah. Several applications use the public clouds, yeah, you know, such as Google Mail, uh, Google Drive, Google Photos, yeah, iCloud. Google Apps Engine, yeah, and uh, Microsoft Azure or Windows Azure, and Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud, or EC2. Then, what are the advantages of uh, uh, having this public cloud? Yeah, we have some advantages here. First is cost effectiveness. Yeah, one of the main features of cloud storage that make, uh, makes it favorable among many users it is its uh, cost effectiveness of course yeah this is especially true as some com companies yeah such as google uh, we know that uh, it offers free 15 gig gigabytes of google drive storage yeah which allow users of the public cloud to store a massive amount of data for their personal needs so they intend to upgrade their storage space in the cloud. They can do so easily, yeah, by paying a sum of money, either monthly or manually or, or annually, yeah. This is indeed much cheaper than uh, owing personal storage that has no guarantee in terms of its safety and security of data storage. Similarly, uh, some companies, yeah, such as Dropbox, uh, Apple iCloud, and Microsoft OneDrive. They also offer such services yep, for personal users, but with different packages and benefits. In actual fact, the cloud service providers permit the users from the business, education, and work field to attain various benefits for their organization. This, in the long run, yeah, is cost effective as they do not have to invest in providing a server to host the data that are uh, utilized by the organization. The other advantage is uh, it is maintenance free. Yeah, this is because uh, the cost storage is managed by the company providing the service and not by the users who use the service. Yeah, all hardware and software maintenance tasks will be done by the service providers in the data itself, which provides a worry-free experience for the users as they don't have to worry about uh, things going wrong. Uh, organization that use the public cloud reap more benefits as they do not need to worry about the security of the stored data and upgrades that are required for the system as all of these are taken care of by the service provider. This uh, allows the organization to run their infrastructure with minimal IT administration and thus reduce overall cost. On top of that, the organization can avoid any hassles whenever the cloud system encounters errors or problems. Yeah, The organization can save a lot of energy because the existing manpower to re rectify the error is already available at the surface data centers of the cloud service providers. These cloud services usually offer first class service for customers who use their cloud uh, solutions. Then it has uh, the accessible. Yeah, public cloud service users can access their data easily, of course, while personal users who use cloud services can access and retrieve their data anywhere and at any time provided that they have a proper internet yeah, connection to the cloud. The public uh, cloud also helps users to 
to travel conveniently without having to bring along, you know, your hard drive, disk drives or pen drives, which can be risky, yeah, especially when these physical drives fail to function properly or they are, they are misplaced. Okay, by utilizing the public cloud, users can easily uh, share their data with others by giving them access or link. Thus, their uh, workflow will not be disrupted. Um, organization adopting this public cloud solution will gain sub substantial benefits as all the data required by their employees can be retrieved from the cloud. So, it automatically makes their job easily. Okay. This is uh, particularly, particularly evidence during the pandemic yeah, when most people working from home had to transport their data which are, uh, which are already synced into the cloud service provided by their organization or by the company. It is safe to say that the public cloud is the most ideal uh, solution for those who had to work from home yeah, during COVID-19 pandemic. It is indeed a convenient platform for anyone given its feature as a one-stop solution. Next, the advantage is the scalability. Yeah, the storage solution offered to an individual uh, can be upgraded if required, and this can be done with just a click of several buttons. Yeah, the convenience provided by the public cloud helps most uh, users to choose proper storage solution at affordable prices. Most of the time, paying for cloud services to get larger storage space is much cheaper yeah, than owing a hard disk uh, for personal use. Yeah, These cloud services offer enterprise-grade solutions for large organizations such as companies, uh, universities, yeah. Uh, whereby they can customize the solution that they require and pay them accordingly and pay them accordingly yeah in the event that they run out of storage they can just yeah you know purchase more storage indeed some service providers allow such organization to own several servers which are managed by the providers so that they can get the most out of what they spend to increase the capacity of their cloud services, uh, sorry, uh, of their cloud storage. And the last one, we have high reliability. Yeah, um, public cloud is one of the most reliable storage solution due to uh, several contributing factors. Yeah, first, it is because of uh, the mass operation of these cloud services uh, providers. They usually have to fail safe methods like having backup servers or an extra layer of security pro protection just to secure the data of the users that use their service. Okay, next, these providers have a strict data protection policy where they are not allowed to access the customer's data. Yeah, thus, this allows for a safer environment for the users. And finally, these providers also have remote backup where the data of this user are stored in multiple locations. If an emergency occurs in which one facility is destroyed or shut down, other facility will be able to operate with ease as the service provider's facilities are not crippled, yeah, as they have a backup on hand. Taking into consideration all these steps that the cloud service providers implement into their cloud solution, we can clearly see that cloud services are highly reliable as they can provide zero downtime for users and especially for organization this really really benefits them as the downtime of their business will cause them a major loss right okay we have the advantages and also we have the limitation so we have uh, here number one of um, loose control, yeah. So um, yeah, you know, although the public cloud provides numerous advantages, yeah, as we heard before, yeah, it has also potential downsides, yeah. So before uh, considering implementing a public cloud, it is yeah critical for everyone 
to consider the benefits and drawbacks carefully. Yeah. So here we go with the limitation or challenges. Yeah. Uh, the drawbacks. Yeah. Uh, number one is loss of control. Okay. It is practically out of reach when you outsource to the public cloud. Any configuration and other IT management tasks are delegated to a group of people that are not directly involved in any day-to-day -day operation. Then, uh, other limitation is data security and privacy. When data access is simple, public clouds do not allow user to see where their data is stored or who has the access to it. There is no guarantee that users' data and information will not be exposed to other third parties when they are placed on the public cloud. Everything will be out of users' physical control, and the public cloud service providers will be in charge of users' individual information. Then we have controlling cost. The pay-as-you-go approach is handy, yeah, but it may be costly if it is not managed properly. It can be expensive if uh, it is left to a self-service uh, self without any manage, uh, management expense. It will be hard for users uh, to track their expenses yeah, if they make a monthly subscription. So, they should be disciplined if they choose to subscribe uh, to a cloud service provider. Then next, we have the internet connectivity. A high-speed internet connectivity is required for cloud services. Yeah? Small companies, small companies experiencing connectivity difficulties should prioritize investing in a robust internet connection to avoid the downtime. Then we have the last one is lack of customization. The multi-tenancy atmosphere of the public cloud can limit or restrain any customization. This can be catastrophic for organization yeah, with a complex application process or complicated network architecture. Alright. So, although, um, yeah, you can see the, you can read the text, yeah, as info before. Next, we go to the paper focus. So, what to focus on this paper? Uh, this paper special, specifically focuses on Public cloud related matters. Yeah, the public cloud can be widely accessed worldwide with the help of service providers that control the cloud infrastructure. And this also aims to study the familiarity of public cloud services among respondents of multiple age groups and to find out the advantages and disadvantages of using the public cloud that we already seen before. Okay, the method we use here. We are using survey, yeah. Uh, we collect seed information, yeah, from the respondents regarding the use of the public cloud, yeah, uh, is Google form, yeah. And it was around 62 respondents, yeah, answered the survey. And all respondents in Malaysia who use, of course, uh, cloud services in Malaysia. And the age group, age groups, uh, the range, yeah, uh, that have taken part the survey is individuals uh, between 21 to uh, 45 years above. Okay. Next, we go to the result and uh, decision. All right. We see here the age groups of range, yeah, who have taken a part in survey. The result, yeah, we see in the monitor, yeah, it shows that the majority of the respondents, yeah, 77.4% um, are of the age group of 18 to 24 years old, which mostly consists of university students, yeah. The second highest percentage of respondents age group is uh, the 45 years old and above. It's, it is 8. Uh, 0.1 percent the 12 to 17 years old age group one precise for respondents uh, which is 6.5 percent of secondary school students the minority of the respondents comprises uh, the age of 35 to 44 years old yeah 
which is 4.8% and the 25 to 34 years old age group is 3.2%. Okay. Um we see the respondents result here. Uh figure 1, yeah. It shows about respondents knowledge about the public cloud. So the result shows that the majority of the respondents uh, 96.2 know what a public cloud is and the minority 4.8 percent do not know what a public cloud is then next we go to the figure 2 it shows respondents who use public cloud services yeah the result shows the that the majority of respondents 90.3 percent use public cloud services while minority 9.7 percent do not use public cloud services this may be because some respondents are not familiar yeah, with how public cloud services work. Then we go to the figure 3. It is uh, op opinions on the safety of public clouds. All right. Um, most respondents, yeah, 75.8% uh, are of the opinion that public clouds are safe while some respondent 24.2% think that uh, public clouds uh, aren't safe yeah this is probably because there is a possibility yeah that users of the public cloud uh, might be uh, not feeling safe okay and figure 4 it shows the affordability of public cloud services okay the result uh, depicts that most respondents, 74.2, think that public cloud services are rather affordable, while 25.8 um, yeah, percent think that public cloud services are expensive. Okay, this shows that some respondents may find certain public cloud services affordable as they use the service often or daily compared to those who really rarely use the public cloud yeah uh, hacks and the uploaded information might be misused by unethical public cloud services okay then we go to the use and purpose we see for the left figure here it shows the types of public cloud services used by the respondents. Yeah. Um, the results exhibit that the top three widely used public cloud services among respondents are Google Drive, 91.9%, and then Microsoft OneDrive, 46.8%, and iCloud, 32.3%. As Expected, uh, Google Drive is used by the majority of the respondents. Yeah, as uh, Google Drive is a part of Google Workspace, where most individuals or organization use Gmail, and as their primary email service, where it comes with, as we know, 15 gigabytes of storage for free accounts, and a certain amount to unlimited storage for organization, depending on the plan the organization has subscribed. For, yeah. Meanwhile, Microsoft OneDrive is also widely used by the respondents, as most people use Microsoft Office. The respondents utilize OneDrive for their studies or work. OneDrive makes it easier for the respondents to save their assignment or work automatically to the cloud to the yeah to the cloud service uh, offered by Microsoft as OneDrive. Uh, users can turn on the auto save function when using Microsoft Office software. Then we see the right figure here. It shows the respondents' purposes for using public cloud services. Yeah, the result shows that um 43 respondents, yeah, which is 69.8 percent, use the public cloud for studies. And 29 respondents, 46.8%, have chosen the option security backup storage as the reason for using public cloud services. Uh, meanwhile, 7 respondents, which is 11.3%, use public cloud services for entertainment, 
5 respondents 8.1% use public cloud services for business purposes 2 respondents 3.2% use public cloud service for work purposes and 1 respondent uh, uses public cloud for all the same purposes okay so in the survey most respondents use public cloud services for studies as respondents are mostly university students yeah and a few secondary school students the number of respondents who use public cloud service for security purposes show that public cloud services are reliable and safe to use. Okay, now uh, reason using public cloud services. Okay, we see the figure here. Um, the result shows that 32 respondents feel that the public cloud provides strong security for data and work uplo uploaded to the use platform. While uh, 28 respondents are neutral about the reasons provided. And 2 respondents uh, disagree with the statement. Okay. And most of the respondents, 95 uh, respondents agree that the public cloud provides easy access to data and information anywhere, anytime. While a minority of the respondents, only two respondents, are neutral about it. And one respondent disagrees with uh, the provided statement. As can be depicted from the figure, 56 respondents agree that the public cloud service an additional data backup other than a pen drive or external storage like a small hard drive. Meanwhile, five respondents have been neutral with the provided statement yeah um and one respondent disagrees with the statement lastly most um respondents 32 respondents are neutral that the cost of a public cloud subscription is affordable while 23 respondents agree that the cost is affordable and seven respondents disagree with the said statement Okay, now we go to the future increase in usage. As we can see from the figure, um, the result shows that many of the respondents, 55 respondents, think that it is easy to sign up for public cloud services. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, some of the respondents, six respondents, yeah, uh, have an opinion on the signing up process, and one respondent disagrees with the statement that signing up for public cloud uh, services is easy. Most of the respondents, yeah, 56 respondents are of the opinion that the increase in usage of public cloud service is due to its availability 24-7. While 5 respondents have the neutral opinion that public cloud services are available 24-7. And one respondent disagrees with the statement that public cost services are available 24-7. Okay, as shown in the figure, uh, 45 respondents agree that the usage of public cost services does not require much technical knowledge. Yeah, while well, 15 respondents are neutral and 2 disagree with the statement. This may be because some respondents are IT savvy and some are unfamiliar with such technologies. Yeah. And next, most of the respondents, 52, agree that easy storage of large amounts of data will induce an increase in the usage of the public cloud in the future. Meanwhile, 8 respondents are neutral with the statement, and a minority of the respondents, 2 respondents, disagree with the statement. And finally, we have 43 respondents agree that since data and information can be securely stored in public clouds, it will be the driving force to increase the usage of public cloud services in the future. While 18 respondents have been neutral and one respondent disagrees with the provided statement. So, overall, we can say the conducted survey has received a rather positive response from the respondents yeah, regarding the knowledge and usage of public cloud services among multiple age groups ranging from 12 to 45 years old and above. It can be concluded that most of the respondents are aware of public cloud services uh, that uh, they use on daily basis. 
It is rather helpful in enabling them to manage the storage of large amounts of data in a cloud server that is accessible 24-7 anywhere in the world. Then we go to the conclusion. We summarize, yeah. So what we have here, uh, it can be derived that public cloud uh, services are raising as people are starting to realize the benefits uh, of public cloud services and the importance of securely storing large amounts of data without taking up much space on their local storage devices, yeah, such as laptops or phones. Then, uh, public cloud service providers like Google Drive automatically allocate 15 gigabytes of free storage when an individual signs up for a Gmail account. Yeah. Microsoft OneDrive can be linked um, Yeah, Microsoft OneDrive can be linked to Gmail accounts yeah if it is registered and uh, registered under an organization that uses Microsoft Office yeah or alternatively one can simply sign up for a Microsoft account to use uh, the OneDrive. Next we have iCloud. This one is should be i yeah iCloud, not cloud, but iCloud. iCloud is usually offered to individuals who own an Apple device, such as iPhone, iPad, MacBook, or iMac. Yeah, This enables him or her to access the full features of iCloud services and sync data across multiple iOS devices. Although an individual who does not own an Apple device still also can sign up for web-only access to iCloud. Yeah. The account is limited to only one gigabyte worth to storage. Then the last one is public cloud services are slowly gaining popularity in the marketplace among different types of users ranging from students, customers, uh, small businesses, and large corporations. Public cloud services are generally becoming more affordable and sought after by multiple types of users all right so uh, he come uh, we are in the acknowledgement page then after that finally it is thank you so thank you uh, from us have a nice day assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh